Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology and Math Revision Hub. Today I'm going through the potential questions for the scientific article for June 2024. I took a bit of time because my throat was not well since I had a cold. The first question is, what is horizontal gene transfer? This is the transfer of genetic material between different species in roots other than parent to offspring. So this is how you should answer that question. In question two, they could ask, discuss the significance of the discovery of horizontal gene transfer between plants and insects in evolutionary biology. Here you could say horizontal gene transfer challenges traditional views of evolutionary relationships by showing that genetic material can move between distantly related organisms, potentially leading to acquisition of new traits. Then explain how viruses may have facilitated the horizontal gene transfer events described in the article. Here you could say viruses that cause disease in plants are transmitted by white flies and have incorporated plant DNA, which was then transferred to the white flies and integrated into their genomes. Then next they could ask, discuss the potential applications of the findings regarding horizontal gene transfer in engineering crops as mentioned in the article. You could say the findings suggest a potential mechanism for engineering crops to target plant pests and enhance crop resistance, although there is a concern about evolution of resistance in pests. And then question five, they could say compare and contrast vertical gene transfer with horizontal gene transfer. Vertical gene transfer involves the transfer of genetic material from parent to offsprings, maintaining genetic continuity within a species. Horizontal gene transfer involves the transfer of genetic material between different species potentially leading to acquisition of new traits. What role does Caitlin Bryant suggest horizontal gene transfer plays in helping organisms adapt to survival pressures? Here you could say Bryant suggests that organisms can borrow genetic information from other organisms to enhance survival when there is a strong pressure for survival, indicating that horizontal gene transfer may be underestimated in nature. Then question seven describes the process of RNA interference used by researchers to disrupt the function of the BTPMPA T1 gene in white flies. You could say RNA interference involves introducing small RNA molecules that are complementary to the target gene, leading to the degradation of the target messenger RNA and the subsequent inhibition of gene expression. So some genes will not be expressed. Then question eight, analyze the ethical implications of using RNA interference to manipulate gene expression in organisms. Here you could say ethical considerations may include concern about unintended consequences, the potential for off-target effects, and the implication of altering the genetic makeup of the organism. Question 9 says discuss the potential risks associated with the use of genetically modified crops engineered to target plant pests. Here you could say risks may include the evolution of resistance in pest populations, unintended harm to non-target organisms, as well as negative impacts on biodiversity and ecosystems. Question 10 describes the process of DNA sequencing and its role in identifying novel genes, as mentioned in the article. You could say DNA sequencing involves determining the precise order of nucleotides in a DNA molecule, and it can be used to identify novel genes by comparing the sequence of an organism's genome to known sequences. Then discuss the potential applications of DNA sequencing technology in studying horizontal gene transfer events. Here you could say DNA sequencing technology can be used to trace the origin and spread of horizontally transferred genes, providing insight into the mechanisms and frequency of horizontal gene transfer in natural populations. Explain how the discovery of horizontally transferred genes may impact our understanding of the origins of genetic diversity. Here you could say the discovery of horizontally transferred genes suggests that genetic diversity may arise not only through mutations and recombination, but also through acquisition of genes from other organisms. Describe the process of DNA amplification and its applications in molecular biology. DNA amplification involves making multiple copies of a specific DNA sequence using techniques such as polymerase chain reaction, it is used in various applications, including DNA sequencing, genotyping, as well as gene expression analysis. 
Question 14 describes the process of genetic engineering and its application in biotechnology. Genetic engineering involves manipulating the genetic material of organisms to produce desired traits or characteristics. It is used in various applications including agriculture, medicine and industry. In question 15, describe the process of conjugation and its significance in bacterial evolution. Conjugation allows for transfer of genetic materials such as plasmids between bacterial cells, continuing to genetic diversity and adaptation in bacterial populations. Question 16. Analyze the potential implications of horizontal gene transfer for the development of novel biotechnological applications in medicine. Horizontal gene transfer research may inspire the development of new biotechnology applications such as gene therapy, vaccine development, and the prevention and treatment of disease. Explain how horizontal gene transfer may influence the evolution of microbial pathogens in clinical settings. Horizontal gene transfer can facilitate the acquisition of virulence factors and antibiotic resistant genes by microbial pathogens, leading to increased pathogenicity and the emergence of drug resistant strains. Question 18 describes the role of horizontal gene transfer in creating antibiotic resistant strains. You can say horizontal gene transfer allows for the transfer of antibiotic resistance genes between different bacterial species in environmental habitats contributing to the spread of antibiotic resistance in natural ecosystems. Question 19 analyzes the potential applications of horizontal gene transfer research in the development of novel antimicrobial therapies. You could say horizontal gene transfer research can provide the insight into the genetic mechanisms underlying antibiotic resistance and facilitate the development of novel antimicrobial therapies by targeting key pathways in horizontal gene transfer. Question 20. What are the advantages of genetic engineering? It has many advantages, for example, improved crop yields. Here, it can produce crops with higher yields, enhancing the food production as well as food security. And then enhance nutritional content. The crops can be engineered to contain higher levels of essential nutrients, addressing deficiencies in human diets. For example, the golden rice, which has increased vitamin A content. Then pests and disease resistance. Genetically modified crops can be made resistant to pests and diseases, reducing the need for chemical pesticides and increasing agricultural sustainability. Then there is drought and stress tolerance. Some crops can be engineered to withstand environmental stress such as drought, salinity, extreme temperatures, allowing cultivation in previously inhospitable areas. It can also be helpful in medical advancements. Here, genetic engineering will enable the production of therapeutic proteins such as insulin and growth hormones and the development of gene therapies for treating genetic disorders. You could also say enhance livestock traits, animals that can be genetically modified for better growth rates disease resistance, and improved production of milk, meat, as well as wool. It can also give environmental benefits like reduced need for chemical inputs, for example, reduction in the use of pesticides and fertilizers in agriculture, as well as leading to less pollution and lower greenhouse gas emissions. There is bioremediation. Microorganisms can be used to clean up environmental contaminants, such as oil spills and heavy metals. It can also be used in industrial applications where genetic engineering can optimize the production of biofuels, biodegradable plastics, and other industrial products, which can contribute to more sustainable manufacturing processes. It can also be used in scientific research, where it facilitates the study of gene function and regulation, aiding the understanding of biological processes and the development of new technologies. Question 21. What are the disadvantages of genetic engineering? So here we have some ethical concerns where genetic manipulation, especially in humans and animals, raises ethical issues regarding the extent to which humans should interfere with natural organisms. There is a risk of unintended consequences where it may lead to unforeseen side effects, including the creation of new allergens or toxins in genetically modified organisms. It also has some environmental impacts where GMOs might compete with natural species leading to loss of biodiversity. And this can also spread engineered genes to wild populations through cross-pollination, and this can have unpredictable ecological effects. It could lead to development of resistance, where pests and pathogens may develop resistance 
to genetically engineered traits such as pest-resistant crops, leading to new and potentially more aggressive strains. There is economic concerns where the adoption of genetically engineered crops can lead to economic challenges for small-scale farmers who may not afford the technology or become dependent on a few biotechnology companies for seed and agriculture input. There is loss of traditional varieties where a widespread use of genetically engineered crops may lead to reduction of traditional crop varieties, impacting cultural heritage as well as biodiversity or agricultural diversity. There is also health risks. Of course, although currently they are considered safe, long-term health effects of consuming GMOs are still debated with concerns about potential unknown impacts. Question 22, what is genetic engineering? You can say genetic engineering involves the modification of an organism's genetic material to achieve desired traits or outcomes. In question 23, describe the process of genetic engineering. In genetic engineering, you identify the gene of interest and isolate it. In doing so, you use the stem restriction enzyme to cut out the specific gene of interest from the DNA and to cut out the plasmid. This leaves complementary sticky ends. You use the DNA ligase to insert the gene into the plasmid and then introduce the recombinant plasmid into the target bacteria or organisms. Here, the plasmid is acting as a vector. Then the bacteria cells are cultured or whichever organism is going to be grown and selection is carried out to confirm the presence of the new gene. This is usually if you're working with bacteria. Selection can be carried out using antibiotics or other markers. Here you need to remember that other methods can be used to insert the genes. This could be using a gene gun to shoot the nanoparticles coded with DNA into the cells. It could be using viral vectors in which harmless viruses are used. It could be using electroporation as well as using liposomes. Question 24 describes the process of polymerase chain reaction. This is a process carried out to amplify DNA. It requires a DNA sample, tag polymerase, primers, nucleotides, and a buffer. The mixture is placed in a PCR machine, heated to 90 to 95 degrees Celsius to break the hydrogen bonds between the strands. Then it's cooled to 50 to 60 degrees Celsius for primers to bind. That is about for 20 seconds and then it's heated to 75 degrees Celsius for annealing by polymerase to be carried out. That occurs one minute. And then all the steps are gonna be repeated until the desired quantity of DNA is achieved. Question 25, describe the process of gel electrophoresis. This is a technique used to separate DNA or RNA or proteins based on their size and charge. Samples are gonna be loaded into wells of an agarose gel and an electric current is going to be applied across the gel. The molecules are going to migrate through the gel towards the positive electrode, with smaller molecules moving faster and further than larger ones. A dye is often used to visualize the separated molecules which form distinct bands in the gel under UV light. By comparing these bands to a molecular weight marker, researchers can determine the size of the molecules in the sample. Question 26. What are local genes and their significance in DNA technology? These are genetic modifications in which a specific gene is deliberately inactivated or knocked out in an organism's genome. They allow scientists to study the function of individual genes by observing the effects of their absence. By disrupting the gene's normal function, researchers can understand its role in biological processes, development, disease mechanisms, as well as potential therapeutic targets. Question 27 describes the process of replica plating. In replica plating, a sterile velvet cloth or filter paper is going to be placed onto a master plate to pick up some cells from each colony, then pressing it onto a secondary plate with selective media. After incubation, growth on the replica plate is compared to that on the master plate to identify colonies with specific traits, such as antibiotic resistance or metabolic capabilities. This method is essential for studying microbial genetics identifying mutants and the examination of different environmental conditions on microbial growth. What is the significance of microarray and bioinformatics technology? Microarray is used to study gene expression patterns of genes simultaneously. It consists of a solid surface like a glass slide onto which DNA probes corresponding to the different genes are fixed. Sample DNA or RNA usually labeled with fluorescent dyes is hybridized to the probes on the microarray. The level of fluorescence at each part on the array indicates the expression level. 
of the corresponding genes in the sample. This enables for the comparison of the expressed genes in different conditions, like healthy or diseased tissues, providing insight into gene function, regulation, mechanisms, and basis of disease. Most of the time, bioinformatics can be accompanying the microarray. Here, computer software is used to analyze the data, interpret, and then establish trends as well as relationships. Question 29, how is control of gene expression carried out? This is referring to Article 2, Paragraph 9. You could say gene expression is the process by which information from a gene is used to synthesize functional gene products. This is usually proteins which determine the traits and function of the cell. In cells, epigenetic control occurs. This has no alteration to the DNA sequence, but uses chemical modifications such as DNA methylation and histone modification. These changes can be influenced by environmental factors and can affect gene activity across generations. Here, transcription factors are used. These are proteins that bind to the specific DNA sequences, typically at the promoter or enhancer regions, to regulate the transcription of genetic information from DNA to messenger RNA. And together, this control when, where, and how much a gene is expressed, playing critical roles in development, differentiation, and cellular responses to the environment. Now, in addition to this, they could ask about post-transcription and translation modification. They could ask about protein synthesis, speciation, evolution, natural selection, stem cells, structural proteins, mitosis, DNA replication, and so on. So I recommend that you go through those topics as well. So this brings us to the end of the potential questions from this scientific article. Thank you for being with us. Do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.